The devastating effects sugar can have on your health are hard to ignore. Today, I'm going to share with you five ways to help you quit sugar. Stay tuned. Sugar and its devastating effects on our health are what I would blame for most of our current health epidemic of type 2 diabetes. The rates of obesity are skyrocketing with adults being diagnosed earlier with type 2 diabetes and children are being diagnosed at an alarming rate, something that used to be referred to as adult onset diabetes. With processed Prepackaged and fast foods loaded with carbohydrates, hidden sugars, processed sugars, and a host of other toxic ingredients, our health is spiraling out of control. Perhaps you are not sure whether you need to quit sugar. As a nutritionist and health expert, I believe everybody should be cutting out processed sugars from their diet, regardless of what their current health status is. Most diabetics have insulin resistance for years before going on to be diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. So let's dive in. The first step is knowing in how much added sugars are considered acceptable and how much you are actually consuming on a daily basis. Daily recommendations for added sugars are no more than 25 grams, yet the average North American consumes about 75 grams of added sugar per day. The biggest thing that's working against us is that approximately 70% of foods consumed by North Americans are processed, and 75% of processed foods contain added sugars. Be sure to watch these two videos here for more information about fake foods and where sugars are being hidden in your foods. Number two, sugar is highly addictive, and it's likened to having a cocaine addiction. So if you've ever known a person with an addiction, whether drugs or alcohol, they are always waiting for that next hit or drink. They lie to themselves and others to achieve that next hit or drink, no matter what the cost. And sugar is very much like that. Which ha- what happens when you have your hit of sugar? It elicits a dopamine response in the pleasure and reward center, giving you a high, and then there is this inevitable crash after. And this is a cycle. We can tell ourselves that we need to quit sugar, maybe to lose weight, or because we've just been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, but it's easy to say, well, we'll just have a little, or this will be the last time. We often just want to feel that high again so badly. Once you quit having sugar, the less you will crave sugar. There are some that say that you need to go cold turkey, which is what I did when I quit sugar originally for reversing type 2 diabetes. And there are some that you will say that you need to do it gradually uh, because they say that you may have a huge withdrawal. And so by the third day of not having sugar, you end up binging on sugar and you make up for what you've missed the last couple days. I would encourage you, however, if you are able to cut sugar out of your diet completely and totally, Going cold turkey is probably the best way because there is really no opportunity for you to lie to yourself about how much you're having, especially when you are having zero sugar. Decide that your health and your life are more important to you than this addiction. And the one thing to note, however, is that if you are currently taking some sort of medication to control type 2 diabetes and its effects, you will want to talk with your doctor and advise him that you are intending to cut out sugar and the other various forms of sugar, which we'll get into in a minute, from your diet. And the reason is because those medications are there to help try and control some of the ways that sugar are dealt with in your body, including insulin levels and whatnot. And so taking sugar completely from your diet in one fell swoop could have an effect with your medication. So it's important that you do talk to your health professional. And number three, you'll want to change your habits. And this is going to be crucial to overcoming this addiction. You will need to sit down and recognize when are the key times during the day when you reach out for sugar. Is it while you're driving on the way to work or from work afterwards? Is it when you're bored or after a meal? Maybe you're used to having a dessert after you have your meal. Is it while you're having some sort of an emotional thing going on? Maybe it's a reward for you or maybe If you're having a bit of an emotional crisis and then you feel that you need to have something sugary in order to feel better. 
For each of those times, you will need to build a safety net in order for you to help quit sugar. If it's normally something that you have dessert after a meal, then maybe you schedule yourself to have a walk every day after dinner. If you have something that's sugary on the way to work or on the way from work, replace that with something else. So maybe it's going to be some sort of drink that you enjoy that isn't loaded with sugar. Maybe a nice fresh lemon water or a nice hot tea when you're going to work might be good or even a coffee if that's your thing. If you are an emotional eater and you eat when you're upset or for reward, determine that you will do something else in those circumstances. Maybe something in the evening is something you crave. Like maybe you usually sit down and have a bowl of ice cream. And so what I find every evening before I go to bed, well, in a little ways before I go to bed, but I enjoy a nice hot cocoa. And I don't mean one of those hot chocolates that's loaded with sugar. I have the real cocoa and I add a little bit of stevia and sometimes an oat milk to make it a little bit creamy. Or I even have um, a whipped cream that's made by Silk and it actually has no carbs and no sugar in it. And so that's a treat for me in the evening if I feel like I'm craving something a little bit sweet. So number four kind of ties into what I was just mentioning in number three, and that is that you're going to need to find other healthful options for these sweet treats. Quitting sugar should be lifelong and not just until you get your blood sugars under control and not until you lose weight, because when you start using again, those issues will be sure to creep right back up on you. Like a drug addict, you cannot expect to going back to just having a little cocaine or just having a drink once in a while. You need to quit and you need to quit for good. And believe me, once you quit sugar, it's definitely not something that you want to have back in your life. So I have people ask me once in a while, well, if I'm going to quit sugar, what is it that I'm going to do when I'm having a craving for something sweet? There are lots of healthful options that you can have when you're craving something sweet. So An apple has a bit of sugar in it. It's a natural sugar, but it also is packed with fiber. So I would choose to have an apple or an orange. It will give you some of that sweetness, but it's not going to have the same effect that having sugar in a processed food or ice cream or something would. It has healthful ingredients that your body needs, and it does have the fiber to help keep your blood sugar under control. And it won't cause a spike in your blood sugar and then a crash afterwards. Your taste buds will actually adjust over time and your taste buds are actually always being replaced. And so as you get used to replacing the sugary treats with something healthful, you will become more satisfied with a healthy food that has more natural sugar. And if you did actually have something that was loaded with sugar at some point, you just tasted something, you will notice how incredibly sweet that tastes and you probably won't enjoy it as much as you used to. The other thing you can do is take some time to look up some healthful treats. Um, I often find myself on Pinterest looking for different ideas that I can try and make. Oftentimes I will make something um, like a, a cookie that doesn't have any sugar and very little carbs and it's not often made with only a couple of ingredients and doesn't have flour in it. And so I enjoy trying to make something new and then it's a treat that we can have in my house once in a while. Cravings are controlled by hormones in your body in the hippocampus and when we begin to get those under control, you will begin to crave sugar much less. And be aware that sugar's not just about sugar, like as if you were thinking about the white stuff that you would add to coffee. Sugar is also stuff like refined carbs that essentially break down into sugars in your body. And so They will also spike your blood glucose levels and insulin levels. So you want to stay away from cookies and crackers and um, even chips and, and things like that. When you go shopping, those are refined carbs. And often those types of foods contain a lot of added and hidden sugars. So number five, you want to get good quality rest and avoid stress as much as possible. When you are stressed, your body produces more cortisol and cortisol is a hormone that is produced by your adrenal glands. It is involved in regulating blood sugar in your body and it can affect every organ in your body. So you want to make it your goal to reduce stress and to try and get at least seven to eight hours of rest every night. And I would perhaps suggest reading before going to sleep at night instead of being on some sort of electronic device as it stimulates your brain 
instead of putting you into a state of rest. And those are the five steps to help you quit sugar, but I'm going to include a bonus step. If you've made it a serious goal to cut out sugar from your life, you want to try and be accountable to somebody about your goal because it is so easy for us to make the choice to quit sugar. And then when a challenging day comes along, it's easy for us to say, kind of like when I refer to somebody who's got a drug addiction, oh, I'll just have a little bit or it'll just be this one time. And so it's easy to slip back into those habits. If you're able to find somebody that you can be accountable with, you will find that you'll be able to stick with your goal better. Are you ready to quit sugar? If so, say yes down in the comment section below. And just to let you know, I will be here cheering you on. If this video has been helpful for you, please give it a thumbs up and share it with someone you know. And if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe for more health and nutrition information. I do look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, be blessed and stay healthy.